Let's cover today Anderson's theory of faulting. What is this theory all about? As per this theory, under non-hydrostatic stress regime, different kinds of faults have been predicted. Let's have a look. We consider a situation where the principal stress axis sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. Henceforth, in this theory, I will be meaning sigma 1 is more than or equal to sigma 2, sigma 2 is more than or equal to sigma 3. This is a specific way of explaining Anderson's theory. Now, in certain books, you will find this is not the way of explanation. In the beginning itself, they will write, they consider sigma 3, sigma 2 and sigma 1. So, that means in my discussion today, what is sigma 1 in some other book that is considered as sigma 3. Sigma 2 in both the books or in both kind of literature remains the same, the intermediate stress axis. Whereas, sigma 3 here is the lowest possible magnitude, whereas here sigma 3 is the highest possible magnitude. So, today I repeat I am going to follow this sigma 1 more than equal to sigma 2 more than equal to sigma 3. If you compare what I am teaching with some book, always look whether they are starting with this or with that. If they are starting with this, wherever we are writing sigma 1 today, the book will write sigma 3, sigma 2 remains the same and wherever today I mention sigma 3, that book will refer sigma 3 as basically sigma 1. Now, consider sigma 1 in this presentation indicates tensile stress extension and sigma 3 in this discussion today will mean compressive stress compression. Now, we are going to see three possibilities. Okay, before that, although we are considering this, we are not considering by the way sigma 1 equal to, sig equal to sigma 2 equal to sigma 3. We are not considering this. If we consider such a situation, it indicates a hydrostatic stress regime or lithostatic stress regime where faulting will not happen. So, we are considering this, but except one possibility, this possibility that their magnitudes are different. Now, here we will see three possibilities. Number one, when sigma 1, the tensile stress axis is vertical. And in this case, what is expected as per Anderson's theory through analysis, it has been found that we will expect conjugate reverse faults with 20 to 30 degree dip. So, this white diagonal and this orange diagonal are the two reverse faults and the dip varies from 20 to 30 degrees. It means if this angle is 22 degree as per the Anderson's theory, this angle will also be 22. If this angle is 29, that angle will be 29. When I say it varies between 20 to 30, it does not mean that in a single case this is 20 degree and that is 27 degree, not like that. Now, let us represent them as a reverse fault. So, I am putting the half arrows the block has moved, one block has moved in that direction, another direction is this where another block has moved. I have not drawn the missing blocks in this diagram. Now, where the two conjugate fault planes intersect given by this line, this line of intersection between two faults is called as the, is designated as the sigma 2 stress axis, which is the intermediate stress axis. And perpendicular to sigma 2 and on a horizontal plane is another stress axis that is the sigma 3 stress axis. So, sigma 3 is compressive stress axis. So, under such a compression conjugate reverse faulting will take place. Now, if this scenario is represented in stereo net, how will it look like? Say this is a stereo plot that is the north direction, this is south, this is east and that is west. Sigma 1 is vertical, a vertical line will be plotted at the center. So, this center in an Andersonian rev conjugate reverse fault case indicates the sigma 1 stress axis. Now, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are horizontal and they are 
making 90 degree angle. So, if I take for example, this as the plot of sigma 2, suppose for some conjugate Andersonian conjugate fault, this is sigma 2, then where will be sigma 3 plotted? Sigma 3 will be 90 degree apart and still lying on the horizontal plane. So, here and here will be the sigma 3 plot. You can see that this angle has to be 90 degree and this angle also has to be 90 degree. Similarly, this angle is 90 and that angle is also 90. One more thing to observe that the sigma 2 stress axis is also the strike of the fault plane. Sigma 2 stress axis, principal stress axis is also the strike of the conjugate fault planes. Okay. So, I have given you in a stereo plot just one example if sigma 1 always at the center of the stereo plot in such faults in Andersonian case sigma 2 and sigma 3 are making 90 degree angle to each other and they will be plotted on the periphery. Now, let us look at the second case when sigma 3 is vertical. What is sigma 3? We considered sigma 3 as the compressive stress. Compressive stress axis is vertical and sigma 1 which is extensional stress is horizontal. That means, crustal block is under extension in a rift setting for example. In that case what happens? As per Andersonian model, conjugate normal faults with 60 to 70 degree dip will be produced. So, how have I drawn the conjugate normal faults? This orange diagonal within the blue cuboid and the white diagonal within the blue cuboid are steeply dipping conjugate planes. So, if this white diagonal is making an angle say 63 degree, very ideally this orange diagonal will also make an angle of 63 degree. And in such a regime where there is extensional tectonic stress acting say rift tectonic setting, normal faults will be produced. So, I can put the half arrows like this for the normal faulting on these planes. Okay. In this case also just like our previous case the intersection between the two fault planes is given by sigma 2 intermediate principal stress axis. And in this case also sigma 2 is the strike of both the fault planes. Now you can notice a comparison between this diagram and that diagram. In this case I have put by the yellow half arrows symbol for reverse faulting and here I have put the normal fault symbol just comparing in this case the dip varies between 20 to 30 degree and in this case the normal faults are steeply dipping the dip varies from 60 to 70 degree. So, therefore, to draw such conjugate faults I have to carefully choose the cuboid which I have shown by the blue line. If I draw the cuboid in this manner first and then draw the diagonal I will automatically get steeply dipping diagonals. Whereas, here if I draw the cuboid in this specific manner with blue color, then automatically I will be getting 20 to 30 degree dipping faults. Let me draw this quickly in front of you, so that explanation can come. Say I am drawing the conjugate reverse fault case, where in Andersonian case the dip will be 20 to 30 degree. So, start in this way, draw a cuboid in this manner. Now, if I draw the two diagonals, then automatically they will be low dipping. For example, this is one diagonal and here is another diagonal, they are making low angle. Now, suppose I want to draw Andersonian conjugate normal faults, then the cuboid I have to draw in a different way. Now, if I draw the two diagonals in that blue cuboid, they will be steeply dipping.
So that is the reason one has to be careful in drawing the blue cuboid and without drawing the blue cuboid it will be difficult to draw the conjugate planes. It may be possible you may be able to do but it will be little bit difficult. So it is recommended if it is asked in the exam draw conjugate normal faults or conjugate reverse faults as per Andersonian model then you draw always the blue cuboid and within that draw the two diagonals then it is possible and becomes easy. Okay, so now if I plot the Andersonian normal fault in the stereo net how it will look like I mean in terms of the stress axis plot. So say here is the stereo net stereo plot and this is the north direction this is south that is east and this is west. Sigma 3 is vertical any vertical line will be plotted at the center. So this is sigma 3. Now sigma 1 and sigma 2 are lying on the horizontal plane and they are making 90 degree angle. So suppose I draw these two points as sigma 1. In that case where will be sigma 2 in the stereo plot? They will be 90 degree apart. So here will be sigma 2. I repeat in this case sigma 2 is the strike of the conjugate normal fault. Therefore here the strike of the conjugate normal fault will be north south. Now, Sigma 3 always remain at the center and sigma 1 sigma 2 orientation may vary on the periphery. Now one more thing I want to tell you this is obvious but let us explain it. Let us compare the Andersonian conjugate reverse fault and the Andersonian conjugate normal fault. We said they are conjugate note that they are dipping in opposite direction. This white diagonal is dipping towards that direction and this orange diagonal is dipping in the opposite direction. This means if this direction is northeast, this direction will be southwest. If this is x degree with respect to north clockwise, then this direction will be x plus 180 degree clockwise measured from the north direction. Same thing will be true here. This orange diagonal is dipping in this direction. Suppose I use a clinometer and I find that for this case, this is a geographic north direction, then the white plane is dipping towards the south direction. So the conjugate planes in this case conjugate faults have opposite dip direction and ideally they have the same dip amount. So now immediately we can comment the Andersonian normal fault will have 60 to 70 degree dip or loosely speaking having more than 45 degree dip loosely speaking. And here the Andersonian reverse fault we can say has less than 45 degree dip. Or in still loose language we can say low dipping reverse faults and high dipping normal faults can be explained and as per Anderson's model steeply dipping. So these statements will be found in the literature more than 45 degree dip normal fault can be explained in terms of Anderson's model. Now in the field if you find just one single normal fault and you do not find its conjugate then we ideally speaking Anderson's model cannot explain that fault. Similarly here in the field you are finding a single reverse fault and you do not see its conjugate. In that case it means the Andersonian model does not truly explain the tectonic scenario in which a single reverse fault has been produced. And there are many cases in the field where we do see a single set of normal fault and we do not see the conjugate, a single set of reverse fault and we do not see the conjugate. We will see in the field once a while that there are low dipping normal faults also. Low angle normal faults say the detachments which cannot be explained as per Anderson's theory and there can be a steeply dipping reverse fault which cannot be explained by Anderson's model. So those are possible in nature. 
Now we are going to move into the third possibility what happens when the intermediate stress axis sigma 2 is vertical. In this scenario, we get vertical strike slip faults and this needs some explanation. So, these two blue planes are the conjugate vertical strike slip faults, they intersect along a line and that line will be vertical. You can take two planes, think of two planes and they cut, their line of intersection between these two vertical planes will be a vertical line. So, this is this vertical line and that line is a sigma 2 stress axis, principal stress axis. So, what does this mean? In this case, sigma 2 was the intersection between two reverse faults and it was horizontal. In this case, sigma 2 was the intersection between two conjugate normal faults and it was horizontal. In this case also, sigma 2 is the intersection between the two fault planes, but in this case it is vertical. Sigma 2 is vertical only in case of strike slip conjugate faults as per Anderson's model. Now, what are the other stress axis orientations? We once we think of the two vertical planes intersecting, we can think of an acute angle and an obtuse angle between them. This angle is the acute angle and that angle is the obtuse angle. Of course, they may intersect at 90 degree angle also, but Anderson's theory does not predict that the strike slip faults will be intersecting at 90 degree angle. No, there is an acute angle and there is an obtuse angle. Now, the line that bisects this acute angle defines the sigma 3 stress axis, principal stress axis and the line that intersects the obtuse angle is the sigma 1 principal stress axis. So, if I draw these three principal stress axis for the Andersonian strike slip fault case, how they will be plotted in the stereo net. North, south, east and west. Sigma 2 is vertical, vertical line will be plotted at the center. So, this is the plot of sigma 2. And now, sigma 1 and sigma 3 are making 90 degree angle and they will be plotted anywhere. Of course, their angular relationship will be maintained and they will be plotted on the periphery. Say I consider this is the plot of sigma 1 axis. In that case, where will be sigma 2 plotted? Sigma 2 will be 90 degree away from it. So, this is total angle is 180 degree, 90 degree is here. So, this plot will be our sigma 3, this will be sigma 3 and here this point will be sigma 3. So, if we now compare the stereo plot of the principal stress axis, when the principal stress intermediate principal stress axis sigma 2 is at the center in the stereo net that means a conjugate river conjugate strike slip fault scenario. If it is a sigma 3 that is plotting at the center of the stereo net that means it is a conjugate normal fault scenario and if sigma 1 is plotting at the center of the stereo plot that means it is a conjugate reverse fault scenario. Now, as I told in the beginning in some books here sigma 1 will be written as sigma 3 and sigma 3 will be written as sigma 1. So, in that case what I said will require some change. Now, in case of sigma 2 vertical condition where the conjugate strike slip faults are produced, let us look at the slip sense generated along with these vertical faults. In this case, note the half arrows and what does this mean? If there are faulted blocks that have moved in a strike slip fashion, look at the rear block, not rear, R E A R, rear, far one. So, from here I am looking and that is the rear block and look at the half arrow that has gone to the left hand side. So, we will call it a sinistral fault. And in this case, what is happening? This is the frontal block, that is the rear block. Rear means the far away and the far away block has gone to the right hand side. So, it is a 
डेक्सट्रल स्लिप सो इन केस ऑफ एंडरसनियन कॉन्जुगेट स्ट्राइक स्लिप फॉल्ट वन ऑफ द मूवमेंट्स विल बी इन ए सिनिस्ट्रल मैनर एंड अदर विल बी इन ए डेक्सट्रल मैनर बोथ कैन नॉट बी इन डेक्सट्रल बोथ कैन नॉट बी इन सिनिस्ट्रल सपोज यू फाइंड बोथ डेक्सट्रल इन द फील्ड दैट विल मीन दैट एंडरसनियन स्ट्रेस रेजिम इज नॉट बींग फॉलोड वन कंडीशन इन एंडरसनियन स्ट्रेस रेजिम वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग दैट वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस एक्सिस इज ऑलवेज वर्टिकल एंड द अदर टू स्ट्रेस एक्सिस आर ऑलवेज हॉराइजोंटल नाउ दिस इज ट्रू इन मेनी प्लेसेज इन द वर्ल्ड बट नॉट एवरीवेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इमेजिन ऑन ए टेरेन देर इज ए डाइक कमिंग फ्रॉम बॉटम एंड इट इज पुशिंग द ग्राउंड सर्फेस इज एन एंगुलर मैनर इन दैट केस द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस एक्सेस विल नॉट बी वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस एक्सेस विल नॉट बी वर्टिकल सिंस दिस इज द पुश इनफैक्ट दिस कैन इट सेल्फ बी द वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस एक्सेस अंडर सार्टन कंसिडरेशन देन देर आर अदर काइंड ऑफ फॉल्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्ट्राइक स्लिप फॉल्ट विच इज नॉट वर्टिकल let's say 40 degree dipping strike slip fault yes those are reported on the earth and in those cases andersonian regime is not followed if andersonian regime is not followed that means this kind of plot that sigma i i may be 1 2 or 3 will not be true whereas this kind of plot will always mean that it's an andersonian stress regime let me talk about the possibility of one of the stress axis always vertical one of the prerequisites of this discussions is that we write in this way since there cannot be any shear stresses any shear stress on the earth surface therefore one of the principal stress axis one of the sigma i will be vertical now what does this mean such a statement will be found in the literature but we need to understand we are saying it is said that there cannot be any shear stress on the earth surface really there are earth shear stresses acting on the earth surface the river is flowing on the earth surface so the water which is flowing on the earth surface is giving a shear stress but that shear stress is insufficient to deform the rock so implicit in this statement is that even though there is a shear stress acting on the earth surface such as river flowing or the glacier moving many times the earth surface is not affected by that shear stress the shear stress is you in most of the cases is very low since there is no shear stress acting on the earth surface then we comment that one of the principal stress axis will be vertical how the principal stress axis are defined the principal stress axis are defined in this way in a deforming terrain we have to find out a plane on which there is no shear stress acting perpendicular to that we say that one of the principal stress axis is there now look at this statement in a converse way now we are saying on the earth surface there is no shear stress effective which can lead to a deformation if that is the case then one of the stress axis sigma i will always be vertical and once one of them is vertical the other two will become horizontal the reason is it can be independently be discussed that the principal stress axis are three mutually perpendicular lines so if one line is vertical the other two inevitably becomes horizontal in nature there can be listric faulting which cannot be explained by andersonian model so to explain listric faulting there are other models such as hafner's analysis there can be a high angle reverse fault a low angle normal fault and then there are non vertical strike slip faults not conjugate faults a single fault plane where andersons model cannot be explained there can be primary faulting not due to tectonics rather due to differential compaction of the sediments never bring the concept of andersonian model andersonian stress axis orientation in these cases once we say that the two 
principal stress axis are horizontal, one of them can be induced by tectonics. For example, suppose due to rifting, there is splitting of the lithosphere. So, as the lithosphere block moves apart, rifts and then drifts, this becomes one of the extensional stress axis. It can be easily be established. Or imagine a collisional orogeny where such as Himalaya, Zagros, Andes or Alps where the block is compressed, the, the lithospheric blocks are compressed, the plates are compressed. So, along the direction of the plate movement, one of the stress axis can be established. So, in those cases, the principal stress axis orientation can be worked out. By doing field work, the stress axis orientation can be worked out. However, finding out the magnitude of the stress sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in the past is bit difficult. And in terms of the present day stress regime, the parameters sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 in the present context, we may write them in a different way. For example, we may write in this way S1, S2 and S3. S1, S2, S3 will indicate the present day stress regime. There is another way of writing the principal stress axis at present which is vertical can be written as SV and there are two horizontal principal stress axis. So, they can be written as S capital H and S small h. Now, capital H and small h means what? S capital H is more than S small h. So, now once I said SV, SH and SH, you might be able to convert sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 what I stated here. This is another way of expressing S. Once we are using S, V, S, H and S, H, this would indicate the present day stress regime. The present day stress regime may match with the paleo stress regime in few cases, yes. For example, in the Himalaya, last 55 million years, Indian plate is compressing the Eurasian plate. So, in the last 55 million years, sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 orientation has not changed much if we think of a specific location. Whereas, there are other places in Indian terrain or anywhere else such as at extensional basin, the Barme, Jaisalmer, Bikan and Nagaur, where in the past there was extension, right now the basin has undergone inversion, the stress regime has changed. In the Rajasthan case, the basins are inverted because of the India-Eurasia collision 55 million year onward. So, now it is in the situation. So, there in these Rajasthan basins, the SV, SH and SH will give one kind of expression, whereas in the past sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, which can be found from the field work, will have a different orientation. 